Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, we were making some DIY home decor inspired by objects found at West Elm. I feel like West Elm is one of those stores that has really nice classic pieces that will last you for years, but they also have some really fun trendy items as well. I also really love that they frequently feature and partner with small businesses, so you're always able to support a local artist on their site. So I definitely would consider West Elm one of those places that's really great to shop at but also find a lot of inspiration so I hope that you guys like the projects from today's video I also want to give a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video they've been such a great partner to work with I will talk more about them later but for now let's go ahead and jump into the first project hello from voiceover Tina for our first West Elm dupe I'm using four millimeter macrame cord then I'm measuring it about 44 inches long and I'm going to double it up by folding my macrame on half on the other end and then cutting it. So in total you should have about 88 inches of the macrame all together and I'm going to cut out four of these cords. To hold our hanger I'm using a wooden ring but you can definitely use a half ring like the original or any other type of ring that you have around. And with that I'm going to slip all four cords through it until it's at the halfway point at the top. To keep the two layers of the cords on top of each other, I'm just going to glue them together with a line of hot glue and I'm going to press it down firmly. And for my project, I'm using a dark green, a mustard yellow, and a light pink yarn and these ones are pretty thin so it's perfect for this project. To start, I'm adding hot glue to the back side and then I stuck on my first piece of yarn. Then all you have to do is wrap it around all of the macrame cords and I'm bringing it down about one and a half inches and I'm just going to double wrap that to create a thick layer. Once I was done wrapping, I threaded the yarn through a yarn needle and I used that to tie it onto the back side. And I tucked in the string to make it a little bit more neat, but you could totally skip this step and just glue it to the back as well. And I'm basically just going to repeat those steps with my other colors. I love that you can customize this project to whatever colors you like and I think this palette is super cute. You could also do whatever pattern that you would like with the colors too, but I just stuck with what the originals look like. So the two colors on top are one and a half inches each and then the bottom one will be about half an inch thick. The original piece on West Elm is actually by a company called Yerba Mala. They make beautiful fiber art pieces and you can also find them on Etsy so be sure to check out their awesome handmade work, I'll have it linked down below. Once I finished the top part, I measured about 20 inches down from the bottom of the yarn and the pot that I'm putting in here is quite small so this is going to be the perfect height but depending on your pot, you may want to make this longer or shorter. I used a piece of tape to keep the cords flat and this was really helpful since the eight cords gets kind of confusing and this worked great so I can differentiate the top four strands from the bottom four. I hot glued the cords together and I basically just repeated the same steps as the top to the bottom. This time I'm just using the yellow and the pink yarn here and I think they just look so cute together. The wrapping process is a little bit repetitive but it's also really perfect to just pop on a show while you're doing it. And while I was working on this project, I actually watched Selling Sunset for the first time. Let me know if you guys also watch it. I'm currently only on the first season and I can't believe I didn't start it sooner. To finish it off, I'm cutting the bottom so that we have a blunt end and it's ready to go. And for my pot, I actually used one of these round glass vases from Dollar Tree. I first sanded it down so we would have a rough surface and then I spray painted it with this off-white cream color. I gave it two coats and then I also gave it a clear top coat and then I popped it into our new hanger. This hanger was so easy to make. I love the fun touches of color and this palette is just so cute. And the fact that we didn't need to do any knots to create this hanger is pretty awesome. It took me about a half hour to complete and I would totally recommend that you guys try this one out. I definitely wanna make even more of these because they make the most stylish home for my little plant babies. 
before jumping into the next project, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you guys don't already know, I am working on a website on Squarespace right now. It's taking me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but that's just because I'm very indecisive and they have so many great options and themes and colors. And what's really great about building a website on Squarespace is that I'm able to make all these changes without knowing any HTML coding, which is just amazing. They have so many great templates to choose from. So whether you're a blogger, a small business owner, or an artist looking to build your online portfolio, you can create a website with integrated e-commerce templates, marketing analytics, and email campaigns to reach your customers and supporters. I also really love that Squarespace provides users with resources to succeed online. So even if you're not building a website right now, you can check out their blog and free guides to find helpful information. If you've been wanting to make a website for yourself or your business, now is a great time to do it. I would definitely recommend to check out their free trial and when you're ready to sign up, you can get 10% off of your first website or domain with my link down below. I'll have all the details listed in my description box, so make sure that you check them out. All right guys, let's jump back into the video and onto the next project. All right, onto our next dupe, I have this set of molds and it only comes with one circle coaster. And since I wanna make two of them, I'm gonna have to make two smaller batches of concrete. I will link this set and the supplies from today's video below, but if you have multiple circle molds, you can batch this up. So I'm using concrete for this project and essentially I'm mixing in water a little bit at a time until we get a pancake consistency. The ratio of concrete to water is about four to one. So a little bit of water really does go a long way. And the brand I'm using is called Cement All and I just got it at my local hardware store. Once it's all mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and color our base and I want this to be a navy blue color. So I'm just adding in some acrylic paint and mixing it until it's even throughout. This is my second time working out with concrete and if you caught my last video, you know that I was just blown away by this technique. Concrete DIYs are just so much fun and I'm super excited to try out new projects like this one. Now to create a marbled effect, I'm using a darker blue color and it almost looks black. I'm just gonna add in an ample amount and I'm going to loosely mix this up. At this point, you don't wanna mix it up too well so that we can create some veining to create a cool marbled effect. Now I'm gonna quickly pour that into the concrete mold and I'm making sure that I really get into all the crevices so that every nook and cranny is filled with concrete. I also found that filling it up right to the brim is best because then you could shake it to level it out. This is gonna be really great because then our bottom is gonna be super smooth and then we can avoid sanding all together. This next step is super important, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tap the sides as well as tapping the mold onto my desk. And this is gonna get rid of any air bubbles. The longer you do this, the more air bubbles you'll notice rising to the top. So I really took my time with this and I tapped it for a couple of minutes. Now I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour to an hour and a half. And since these molds are smaller, the time it takes is pretty fast. So after that, I'm just gonna pop it out and reveal our beautiful coaster. As it's curing, you'll actually notice that the concrete heats up, so you'll know that it's done when the concrete cools down completely. If you notice there's any concrete sticking out, you can go ahead and just break it off and do some light sanding on the edges. Now it's time to add our design, and I'm gonna go ahead and map out a crescent moon shape similar to the original. To fill it in, I'm just using regular old acrylic paint for this, and I let it dry in between coats, and it took me about three coats until the coverage was even. You guys already know how much I love moon inspired designs. This one really caught my eye when I saw it on West Elm and I just think it's so beautiful. After that was all dry, I went ahead and used a liquid gold leaf paint to outline our moon as well as give an extra detail to the rim of the coaster. The original design from West Elm actually doesn't have a lip, but since ours does, I thought this would be a nice accent to tie it all together. I also ended up doing two coats of this to make it super even, and a tip for working with this type of paint is to use acetone or nail polish remover to clean your brushes afterwards, and this will really help preserve your brushes after using it. Okay, so this is looking really cute. The last thing I'm gonna do is to give it two coats of clear spray paint. You could also use a water-based polyurethane and this is gonna help seal in our paint. I really love how these coasters came out. They are definitely a more affordable version of the original ones from West Elm. The marbling on this just looks so good and it was so easy to do. And since there's a lip on these coasters, you can totally use them as a trinket dish too. I think this looks so cute. There's definitely room for customization with this project and I am totally obsessed. 
All right, guys, so those were the projects for today's video. Let me know in the comments which one you guys love the most as well as which one you're inspired to try out for yourself. I love hearing your feedback and seeing your recreation, so make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that I could see it and like them. I will also put a few on the screen here. I really am so happy that you guys feel so inspired to create something from my videos. It's honestly one of the most rewarding things about this channel, so thank you guys all so much for always supporting and sending me such kind messages. I really, really appreciate them. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. And again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. It's been so awesome partnering with them and using Squarespace to share more of what I love. And if you guys want to check them out for yourself, make sure that you check out the link down below for a free trial. And that's it for me today. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!